Welcome to the train wreck part eight. This wreck has many installations. The problem with this thermal expansion valve on the low side, there's the indoor coil and cool, it's the evaporator. The capillary tube broke off at the bulb. So what I've done is terminated that, that 0 0.109 inch tubing into a 1 8 uh, compression ferrule the ferrule will not tighten down and clamp and seal on that 109. So I tighten as best as possible to hold the ferrule in place and then solder the back side of it. It works perfectly. Uh, brass fittings from 8th inch pipe out to the quarter male flare for the refrigerant. Gauge manifold. And there's a gauge at 67 pounds supplied by air from the old R134 can with the dispensing valve that I had to rebuild because I lost all the refrigerant. So there you go. But using air pressure to bias on the diaphragm of this TXV, and I can feel cold now. Now, problem. What's that TXV do? If you read refrigeration forums and ask the technicians, they say it measures superheat, or in this case, subcool. And regulates the, the pressure and flow, and that is wrong. <laughs> to sensor measure superheat or subcool requires measuring both ends of the evaporator, and that TXV only accesses the end of the evaporator. The pressure EQ tube on the bottom of the diaphragm, and the pressure from the temperature sensing bulb on the top of the diaphragm, but they're both on the same line. That control is not sensing subcool. It can't. My conundrum with this was trying to figure out what pressures I could put on this capillary bulb just, just with air pressure to make this system work. Well, this system is rated at about 155 PSI with a 70 degree indoor entering air temperature. So 155 pounds on the return side. Question, could I just put 155 on the top of the diaphragm, put the diaphragm in the center. Well, I have no way of knowing what's happening inside of that, except guessing. In theory, if the pressure is the same on both sides, the diaphragm will be centered. I have no idea what that translates to and as far as the valve opening goes inside, and that's what is important. So I was trying to reason what system pressures on the low side equate to what pressures on this capillary tube. And after very careful thinking, I realized my thinking was backwards. The critical question is, what pressure on this capillary tube as a temperature-related reference equates to what pressure on the low side? And the answer is, the pressure on that tube is what sets the pressure on the low side of the sealed system. My first guess was to connect this to the low side. That would have been the mistake because that would have put high pressure on both sides and the thing would have opened up full bore. So, this TXV does not sense subcool. Does not. In fact, if you read Sporlin's engineering data, the company that designed and made these valves, read Sporlin, their technical information on these valves and these control heads. They say that, that measuring superheat is the wrong thing to do. All this has to do is regulate the flow to keep a more or less constant temperature on the outlet of the evaporator. That's all there is to it. In the old days, we would sense the state of charge by seeing how far across the evaporator was cold or frosted. And I think I'm about to get rained out. But um, it just won't quit raining here. But um, uh, got uh, warm here, <coughs> cold here. I did not measure the low side when I connected the can with compressed air, it was at 140 PSI at the top of the gauge. When I connected it, it went down to 67 because this, this big long line was empty. So I lost a great deal of the pressure. And that, that little R134 can doesn't hold much air. And I, I didn't want much. And if you go to experiment with that, realize it's an R134 can. It's going to be designed for R134 pressure and temperature, probably up to 140 Fahrenheit. The little smiley under there is a pressure relief. If it goes too high, that'll pop open and vent the air out. 
so there's not much danger there. But just keep it below a reasonable amount on the PNT chart for R134, and that can will be fine. And uh, by the way, if you're charging from one of these cans, also put the valve under water. I didn't do that and lost half a can. So, moral of the story, if that capillary tube breaks, you don't have to replace that TXV. Just put a small cylinder with 120, 130 some, whatever, 140 pounds that you want on it. This package unit is three, three ton. It is way oversized for the 950 square foot addition it's serving. I could probably set it at 120 PSI, probably work just fine. This unit started up and ran, although it didn't make much cool, but it started up and ran normally. So just isn't making nearly enough because it only has half the pressure on the inlet. But this test proves what that diaphragm does. This diaphragm and that pressure establish the low side pressure. And again, it's got nothing to do with superheater subcool because that's a differential measurement across the coil. And this is only measuring the outlet of the coil. And in heat, it does nothing because it bypasses backwards. So there's the trick. If you don't want to replace that control head, there's how to fix the system. It may not regulate quite right. Um, a, maybe a little better option would be to simply put a can of R134 in there, or at least a little bit of R134 vapor. And that big can will respond to the temperatures in that evaporator compartment. So it's something to experiment with. But uh, for 20 bucks worth of brass, you can make this thing work again. Okay, BYP did it.